I'm Steph. I'm Michael. And I'm super excited because we're going to play some Pathfinder. And this is like one of my favorite games. And we, like when when I first moved here, we were playing Pathfinder all the time. Like No, we not Pathfinder all... RPG. No. We're talking about the Pathfinder Adventure, Adventure Card Game. This is like an RPG for card game players. I have been converted. I now love this game. Yes. <laughs> so, so Steph, you say you don't you don't like RPGs whatsoever, but you've never played one. You know what this is? This is more or less an RPG type of feel. Okay. Except you just don't have cards and stuff. I like you basically, my cards. I know, but I'm saying <laughs> maybe you give RPGs a try at some point. Eh, probably one day. Maybe probably one day. Anyway, um, it's got a very deck buildery feel to it it's got a very legacy feel to it because yeah. you keep building your character uh adventure after adventure after adventure and get all the way to the end right so uh this game is if you can find it um it's really good um this comes with the base set and uh adventure path one there are six adventure paths in total and they come in these little boxes that add more cards and more scenario stuff to the Rise of the Rune Lords game. This is this is this Rise of the Rune Lords this is the first one that came out. Then they came out with Skull and Shackles. Then they came out Wrath. with Wrath of the Righteous and then Mummy's Mask. And then Mummy's Mask. And then Corsa. And that's your favorite is Mummy's Mask. Yeah, yeah. Now there is a second edition of this called the Pathfinder Adventure Card Game Corset. You can play maybe like a half game with it. Like a half what you would get with all of the adventure paths with this. Um, but it's meant to be played in a bigger adventure like this. Um, the first m big expansion that they have for it was called uh, Curse of the Crimson Throne. Yeah. And it basically... So what the core set is designed to do is to have a core set of cards that you will use with every... Uh, upcoming Pathfinder scenario set. And with Curse of the Crimson Throne, you don't need to purchase all of those adventure paths anymore. However, you do have to have the core set and you will then swap cards in and out and in and out and in and out. And that'd be fine for someone like me or like Steph who likes to play it all the time. Um, but, you know, might not be for someone, you know, who is just a casual fan now there are a few rules differences we are going to be playing by the old first edition rules um for example the new rules uh for those of you who are aware of the rules in both sets in the new set um on a check only one person may use a blessing or one of each card type in the old set each player could play one of each card type. So things are a little bit different. And so you can't just interchange cards from one to the other. Uh, so anyway, um, yeah, that's a little bit of the trivia from Charlotte. Her game group was trying to find a birthday gift, had no ideas. Uh, Steve messaged Steph on Board Game Geek, asked her for suggestions. And it's fantastic. And we've actually uh, started playing pathfinder on uh over discord uh over no uh <laughs> tabletop simulator that, charlotte. <laughs> tabletop simulator with charlotte yeah. yeah so we started playing that um so i've played this rise of the rune lords several times and you can play with different characters and different character counts and it's a completely different experience for example in a scenario when uh in an adventure that you play um with two players, with only one character each, there's only going to be four locations. If you're playing with six characters, you've got eight locations. And so it's a it's a really different experience. You have to use your cards to work with one another and to, you know, use cards to bless one another and things like that. Because time goes tick, 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 tick. And if you don't find the bad guy before the deck runs out, game is over. So, anyway. Um... Although it would be fun for me to play Rise of the Rune Lords again, um, we're going to do something different. Pathfinder put out um, a Pathfinder Society thing where you're supposed to like register your characters and then get benefits. And then no matter where you are, you can play with your Pathfinder Society adventure card game. I don't need any of that. 
I'm just going to play the adventures that they have for the Pathfinder Society, but just play it as a standalone game. Um, we are tweaking it somewhat. They say, uh, what they do is they force you to create, uh, to, to buy a, what is called a class deck. Um, my character comes from the Bard class deck. Her character comes from the Fighter class deck. These are optional things you don't have to buy. But we are deciding to play them just for the main reason that they bring new characters to the playing experience. And so you have chosen, you know, one that's not in the base game. I've chosen one that is in the base game, but has different stats from what, from the guy in the base game. Different powers. So, um, so that's what I'm going to play. Um, the rules of the Pathfinder Society say that you're supposed to only use cards from your class deck. No, that's ridiculous. Um, since we are not going to be, you know, taking things in and out of our set and we're not going to go to a friend's house and play and then somebody else's house with our character. No, we're just going to just do things the way you normally do on Pathfinder. Mm -hmm. If you find a card and you acquire a card, you can keep that card. Hmm. That's what that's what you do in this. And you make your characters better and better and better. When we start Adventure Path 2, the monsters get a little harder, the equipment gets a little better, and then you will level up and also get a little better. So you can handle bigger and badder things. So anyway, it's a lot of fun. Um... And this is a venture path that neither Steph nor I have played before. Um, this is, there is Adventure Zero, uh, which we played through. It basically uses Skull and Shackles for the base. Okay. Um, Adventure One from the Pathfinder Society was from Wrath of the Righteous. And it includes a lot of different rules that I didn't want to throw at you guys right at the start. So I started with this Adventure Two. Which goes with the base Rise, uh, Rise of the Rune Lords. Box. I really like the the Adventure Zero with the Skull and it, Yeah, because you love the pirate theme. I, you do, lo love I do love pirates. the pirate theme. Um, so we are going to start off with that. Season of the Rune Lords, much like the um, much like the Rise of the Rune Lords campaign, has six different adventures in it. One through six. Remember, you're going to get box one in the base of Rise of the Rune Lords. Um, but like I said, these are totally new, but they're going to use the same cards that Rise of the Rune Lords has, plus a few other cards. Now, they will give you, on the PDF, they'll give you things that you can print off for the cards and then just use placeholders. But if you go to drive through cards, you can actually purchase these cards. Purchase a whole deck of these cards and... Um, They'll send, you, they'll send it to you in a nice little uh, plastic card box if you add an extra dollar. Always recommend doing that. Um, also, when we did this, as a side note, we I made Steph her own card for her birthday last year. <laughs> and she has awesome. her own Pathfinder character. Yay! So, actually, awesome. if I can get to it, I can show everyone. I actually meant to keep it on the table and did not. So, go past Black Lamp. Yeah, actually meant to keep this out and forgot to do it. Yep. So yeah, we found a bunch of the um, we found a bunch of the bar deck and fighter deck and stuff at one of our conventions that we go to, and we bought all of them at a virtual at a at a virtual flea market, and picked it up at a con. Um, so that's where all the those decks came from. Look at this. Steph has her own Pathfinder card that looks a lot like. One of the normal Pathfinder cards, <laughs> but under the name Pumpkin. Yay! So she has her own stats and everything, and she has her own different card types that she can have and that she can level up to. Um, and whenever she gets to be a big enough level, she can either be an animal friend or she can be a gambler because anyone who knows Steph Obviously. knows she <laughs> loves blackjack and craps and all of that total i, I like taking the chance love taking the chance and then you got the little it looks look like at that. Me. it totally looks just like you it and she also has rainbow trinkets that she can have as an item <laughs> it's sort of like a little game look it looks like her logo it is my logo yeah so anyway we uh this i made that for her played for the photo i think i basically am <laughs> 
So yeah, that's she, uh, she got that for her birthday as well as purchasing all of these. So that was sort of like my present to myself <laughs> and her because I love Pathfinder probably more than she does. Um, so um, anyway, we are gonna we are gonna be completing these adventures in this order. Hey, what's the first adventure? Dark Waters Rising. So we are going to do Dark Waters Rising, and. The Dark Waters Rising adventure consists of six scenarios, and we can complete them in any order. So we are going to complete Goblins, Gross, and I'm going to read these little things to you because that's what I do. So we are going to be doing this adventure, Goblins, Gross. It will tell you if you're playing with one player, you have three locations, and these locations will be filled with cards. And if it's two players, you have four locations. Three players has five locations. Six players has all eight locations. And there's going to be different things that go on in each scenario. And if we beat the scenario, we'll get a reward. If we beat the adventure, we get a reward. And if we beat the whole thing, we're going to get another reward. But that last reward doesn't really matter a whole lot because we're basically done at that point. And so, like, each one of these games is maybe an hour or two hours depending on how easy Usually or Usually an hour. And if you don't do it, then you do it again. Or if you die, you die. If you die, you die. So don't do that either. But, um, yeah, so we're not going to play through the whole path right now. We're just going to play probably the first scenario. Play the first scenario, and then we might actually stream these just whenever the mood strikes. So when you play. see a notification, <laughs> hey, we're probably playing Pathfinder if it's not our normal night. So, yeah. So you can join us. We'll, we'll catch you up on what you've missed if you've missed anything, and, you know. Yep, absolutely. So um, when we start the game... We will start off with 15 cards. There are weapons and spells. And, well, we can see them right here on the back of Lem. We have weapons and spells and armors and items and allies and blessings. So, I start off with one weapon, four spells, no armor, two items, three allies, and five blessings. You see all the little boxes to the side. That's how I can make my character even better. Uh, and there are limits to what I can take. I can't just take spell after spell after spell after spell. I can only get a maximum of six spells, as you can see there. Mm. Um, we can also make our stats better. Strength and dexterity and constitution. And I don't know if you guys can see it well enough, but there is a, like a D4 or a D6 or a D8, D10, D12 next to each of these stats. Yeah. And th that's what we will be doing when we are fighting these, these monsters. We're going to be rolling... Whatever die it says to roll. So, for example, if I find if I find a sword out there that takes an, an eight to acquire, and I'm probably going to have to roll against strength, I'm probably not going to get it because I'm only going to roll a d4. Steph, on the other hand, is going to roll a d10. And if it's even <laughs> if it's melee, it's even better because it's strength plus two for her character. Which she means if she it's likes melee, playing kick-ass fighters. I'm, I start off at a two, and then I roll a die and add to it. Yes, because it's plus two. It's plus two. Right. Um, so whenever Steph is rolling dice, she'll she'll ask. She'll usually ask me, "Do we have enough?" And I'm pretty good at finding, you know, what an average die roll is. So on a six sided die, what's an average of a six sided die? Some a lot of people think, "Oh, it's three. No, it's three and a half. Because count up all the numbers, divide by six, you end up with three and a half. So two sixes, your average you're going to roll is a, everyone should know this, rolling two D sixes. What do you roll most of the time? Craps okay. will tell you this. It's a seven. It's two three and a halves. Mm -hmm. So on average, you're going to roll a seven with two six out of dice. So it's really good to be able to get these averages in your head. So like if you know you need to roll 28 and on average she's going to roll 28, it's basically a 50-50 shot that she's going to hit it. So. Ones. Ones. That's right. <laughs> All ones. Oh, we've done that before. Oh, it's so bad. So, uh, anyway, if you'll switch to the overhead, we can show overhead. overhead. So, we're look at this fantastic play mat. We're not even showing the bottom half because that has the other four locations down here. We don't need it because we're only playing two player. You'll be able to see my cards up here. You'll be able to see her cards over here. Um, there's a little bit of terminology that you need to know for the game. When I am drawing cards, I'm going to draw a hand size of six. Steph is wow. going to draw a hand size of four. Well, she says, well, like it's a good thing. It's good and bad. 
<laughs> Charlotte says, I died like a loser. <laughs> <laughs> so, what happens is, is I will have these cards available to me. If I play a card, then it will go over here to my discard pile. Right? Um, that is not a great thing because when I don't have any cards left and I have to draw up another card and there's no cards left, I die. That's death. That's permadeath for this character. Yeah, don't do that. So, we have rewound, I think, once out of every time we've played and said, you know what? We're not going to count that as a death. We're just going to count it as a loss. And we rewind all of the rewards that we've gotten that adventure. So, we did that. Um, so, you don't want that to happen. So, instead of discarding, if you have a power on it that lets you perhaps recharge. Oh, look, here's a prediction. Ooh. Um, better than discard is to recharge. That means put it on the bottom of your deck. Slightly better than that is to shuffle it into your deck. Slightly better than that is to put it on top of your deck. So you, you probably, slightly better than that is just to display the card and keep it in your hand. So there are levels of, of goodness and badness with all of these things. Um, to banish a card means to put it back in the box. Mm. Um, so that's one level worse. Oh, bury a card is not as bad. Bury means it's gone for that that adventure. So it's worse than discard, not as bad as banish. Banish is, I drank the potion, it's gone for good. Well, yeah. So when we use those terms, that's sort of what we mean. Recharge is probably fine because it's keeping it in your hand in your deck and not putting it in the discard pile. Recharge this is card good. is not great. This card's pretty good. No, recharge is pretty good. Yeah. This card is not great. Right. All right, so I'm going to shovel these up again. My favorite card type for Lem is a spell. So if I don't draw a spell in my first batch of cards, I can do a mulligan and draw again. What? You got your... Yours is probably weapon. Yes. It is? Yep. All right, so you have a dog slicer. You're fine. I'm proficient with light armors, heavy armors, and weapons. Whoops, I need six cards. How about she's, that? She's kind of like a can of whoop ass. That's nice. I've got three spells, a fox, a blessing, and a thieves tools. Blessings, generally, but not always, they will let you add an extra die to a check. So that's sort of nice. Mm -hmm. um, the goal for this game. There are ten different cards in each of these locations. There are four locations. In one of them is the main villain, Gogmert. In three of the other ones is a goblin raider. So if we find a goblin raider, then Gogmert is not in there. Right. Right? Right. So, we are trying to corner Gogmert. All right? And I'll explain how that goes in just a second. You will notice here in the woods, there's something that happens in this location. There are certain cards in this location. In addition, there will be Gogmert or a Goblin Raider. Right. So, in this location, there are four monsters, two barriers, a weapon, and two items in there. <laughs> um... And undefeated monsters, other than villains or henchmen, are banished. So if we fail to kill a monster in the woods, it's just going to be banished. So what our goal is, is to close the woods, either by defeating the Goblin Raider or by defeating Gogmert. But we've got to find him in here. Meanwhile, we're going to be going and fighting all the different other monsters and stuff, and maybe even collecting a few goodies along the way. Um... If for some reason she finds Gogmert, Gogmert is going to run away unless we can close every location first. Sometimes that means he's going to run away the first time we find him. But the good, the best thing would be if we can close a couple of locations. I can be at one location to temporarily close and she can kill Gogmert, then we win. Um, but we don't have all day that we can do this. We've got... 30 cards in a, what's called the Blessing discard pile. Every turn, we're, one card is going to go to the discard pile. Every turn, if we don't defeat this in 30 turns, game over. We are done. And we lost. So. A minute left to uh, predict if we're going to win or lose. All right, who wants to hear a story? We're going to go can with switch, the story. You can switch to the Story the time. <clears throat> now, this isn't going to spoiler anything, I mean, everyone, I mean, you basically find out during the rise of the Rune Lords that there is some big major Rune Lord named Karzug who is causing all sorts of problems and you eventually kill him. 
So this is basically starting from there, so the end of that, the Rise of the Rune Lords adventure, and going forward from there. Mm. So, <clears throat> this is called Season of the Rune Lords. Who hasn't heard of the heroes of Sandpoint? Surely all of Varicia knows of the brave adventurers who ventured into the ruined heart of the Thessalonian Empire and slayed Kazug, the Rune Lord of Greed. You've always thought it strange that those ancient folks wanted to worship at the altar of various sins. But since the ruins of their old nation-states litter the landscape, even today, it must have worked for them. But the whole defeat a legendary power thought long dead routine raises a few questions in your mind, and the muttering you've heard in tavern after tavern proves you're not the only ones wondering. How did Karzu come back from the dead after thousands of years? Why did he come back from the dead after thousands of years? And the big one. The question that keeps you up sometimes at night. Why do people think he's the only rune lord to come back? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> That's the over overarching story for this whole thing. All right. Dark Waters Rising, our first adventure. Um, we have got everything from the base set and the character add-on pack and all the promos that we have and Adventure Path 1. So this is an adventure at level 1. All hail! The Rune Lord Kazug is dead! It's hard to imagine that such a feat could be accomplished. Yet in the high peaks of Shinshalast, a band of hardy adventurers defeated the Rune Lord of Greed. He conspired to bring a realm of nightmares into our world, but the adventurers sealed the Rune Well. What this meant for Galarian was salvation. But what does it mean for the other Rune Lords? That, at the moment anyway, is hard to determine. At the very least, the attention of scholars and sages might be called to Hollow Mountain. The massive peak, legendary for its deep-cut catacombs running throughout its rocky walls, bears the vil visage of Alasnist, the Rune Lord of Wrath. She fled its refuge several thousand years gone, waiting for the remnants of the Empire of Thassalon to awaken. Rumors of increased activity in the ruins of Hollow Mountain are gaining momentum. Could recent events involving a Rune Lord's return be the cause of this mysterious and forbidding possibility? It's impossible to know at this time. But looking upon the lands of Galarian, you can hardly imagine a better time. The lands are brimming with energy. Civilizations are on the rise. Competition for territory is at an all-time peak, and monsters roam the countryside. One could hardly script a world more appealing to rule. For adventurers such as yourselves, the siren song of Hollow Mountain is difficult to resist. That said, you could imagine meeting your doom there, so now is the time for preparation. The heroes who defeated Kazug began their journey in Sandpoint, the site of a surprising amount of tumult for a town its size. Modeling yourselves in their image, you will head there first. There you will gain supplies, sharpen your skills, and make your reputation. Because... What the killing of Kazug represents to you is not history or legend. To you, it represents opportunity. And will it represent an opportunity to the other rune lords as well? Only time will tell. Once, during this adventure path, you may choose one character to temporarily replace one item in her deck with the item Holy Candle. That gets more of our blessings back when we need it. So I think we saved it till okay. we need it. At the end of the scenario in which this benefit is used, return it to the game box and cross this reward off your sheet. Mm. All right. All right, here. So that is the adventure. Adventure one of this whole big, whatever you call it. Path. Path. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> so this is Goblins Gross. 2-1A. Two being the Adventure Society 2. One meaning the first adventure. A, the first scenario in the first adventure. All right. How do I score this? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's how she keeps track of stuff, is that she'll score it based on the adventure yeah. that we've done. Yeah. 2 um, one, one Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <clears throat> the forest around Sandpoint are riddled with goblins. The Thistletop tribe was cleared out by the adventurers who slew Kazug. But the gap has been filled by the Mosswoods, Licktoads, and Seven Tooths. 
Seven tooth. The seven tooth goblins? Oh no! <laughs> what? Goblins with seven tooth. The seven tooths. Haven't you heard of the seven tooths? No. I, I haven't either. They are no smarter than the thistletop denizens, but they are quite a bit more numerous. Hmm. On this bright and sunny day, the good news is that they rarely attack during the daytime. Unless roused against a common enemy, goblins are scavengers who would much rather fight when their opponents are sleeping. Then again, you come across the body of a goblin that has been speared through the chest and driven into a tree. Perhaps the work of an elven ranger? It's worth taking a look. Well, this is interesting, you think. Instead of the normal lumpy green skin, this goblin skin tone varies from vomit green to deep blue to bright purple. The goblin's eyes and mouth are completely surrounded by bulbous, oozy nodules extending down to its windpipe. It's possible that given a day or less, the goblin would have died from suffocation from its own irregular mutations. In fact, in such a circumstance, he might be slain by his own Goblins need to slit their thirst. Time to drink, but kill you first. Oh, of course, you think, as you see gleaming red eyes open in the branches. That's why there's a goblin stuck to a tree. So, goblins like to talk in rhymes. That's... <laughs> well, that's <all>. Um... <laughs> For the rest of the adventure path, one character, if we get, if we win this, for the rest of the adventure path, one character may temporarily replace one item in her deck with the adventure deck one loot, Sihedron Medallion. Mm. And I would, I would recommend it be me because I have a power with healing things. If yeah. I recharge a healing, that's really good. And that is a healing item. Oh, okay. Then definitely. Definitely. At the end of each scenario, return to the loot to the game box, which... Is what you would do if you were not playing with the same deck, the same box every time. Right. We will also get a skill feat. Buy so, games of fire. Buy games of fire. You have to run. Steph likes him already. He's so colorful. <laughs> and he's stable to a tree. She can play with him whenever she wants. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. Um, Alexa, pick a number. It's three. That's me. You. All right. So a couple of my abilities that are probably a little important. At the start of my turn, I can discard a spell and then add a spell from my discard pile back to my hand. That's pretty cool. And I may recharge a card to add one D four to a check by another character at my location. If the recharge card has the healing trait, I can recharge a random card from my own discard pile. So I sort of like mini heal myself. I've got a couple of cures just for that reason. Yeah. And that does have the healing trait, so that's good. I have an ability. That you, says, you do have some abilities. When I would discard a weapon for its power, I may recharge it instead. That's really good. That's really good. Meaning I can just like use my weapons and... Have no fear. But if I ever not don't have a weapon, then I'm in trouble. Right. And if you use that and you recharge it, well, you currently do not, don't have a weapon. But, right. you know, whatever. It's probably fine. It's probably fine. All right. So let's find out how to close these locations. Usually you want to send people to locations where they are at least decent at closing it. Um, or we can help each, you know, if we want to help each other out, maybe we can mm -hmm. do, we can be in the same location. The woods. To close, succeed at a Wisdom or Survival 6 check. My Wisdom is a D6. Mine's a D8. So yours is slightly better. I could probably do it with But this has all blessings. the monsters, so I'm going to go beat them up. It so does. I'll probably go to the woods anyway. Um, when I start getting some cards in my discard pile, I might come over there and help you and actually heal myself while helping you out. Mm -hmm. And that's that probably will work. All right, so let's see the city gate. At the city gate, if you fail a combat check, shuffle a random monster from the box into this location deck. Ugh. When closing, summon and defeat a bandit henchman. He's not terribly bad. He's only like an eight. And when is and when there's no reward for closing. Goblin Fortress. The difficulty to defeat monsters with a goblin trade is increased by two. Oh. To close it, summon and defeat a goblin raider henchman. In addition to the goblin raider, we're probably going to have to fight in here. Mm. On closing, add one D4 random weapons here and take the top card. The old light, add 1d6 to checks using the fire trait. Oh, you mean like a scorching ray? Yes, I think so. 
Um, <laughs> and succeed at an intelligence or knowledge check. Well, my intelli- my knowledge is D6 plus 2. Uh, so that's probably not a bad place for me to start out. Oh, you know what? During this scenario, I did not mention all the different things that can happen when you encounter a goblin. Whenever you encounter a bane with a goblin trait, you're going to roll a 1D6. If it's a 1 before you act... Succeed at a constitution or fortitude five check. If you fail, subtract two from each die you roll. Wow. Or, if you roll a two, the difficulty of checks to defeat the bane is increased by not one, not two, not five, but ten. That's huge. Well, it's a good thing I'm really pretty good at fortitude, so. Yeah. Or three, after you act, move to a random other location. That's probably fine. Well, unless you find a goblin raider, and after you act, you have to move instead of closing. That would be bad. That would be bad. Or four, a random character at your location encounters the bane instead. That character does not roll on this table. Or five, the bane is defeated. Each character at your location is dealt 1d4 acid damage. Ugh. Or six, bury a random card from your discard pile. So, when we wow. encounter goblins, that's what's going to happen. Oh, well, this should be interesting. Yeah, it should be interesting. So, I'm going to start over at the old light because I do have a scorching ray. And when I get stuff over here, I will eventually come over there and help you out. I'm going to start the wood. Sounds good. So, um, the first thing that you do is you can give one character at your location a card. Start of turn. The second thing you that you can do is you can move. The third thing you can do is do a free exploration, which is encountering whatever the top card is. Remember, there are 10 cards in each of these. And we have, so 40 cards total and 30 turns to do it. Yeah, the first thing you do is reveal it. Oh, that's, we flip a, we flip a turn (laughs) thing. So it's just a blessing of the gods. Um, so that's good. And it actually may matter in other versions of Pathfinder. Yes. might be an event. Some of them will actually say something's going to happen to you. Yeah. (laughs) So it can, it can get interesting with the the later Um, Pathfinders. Now, all of the scenarios are not just seek out bad guy, corner bad guy, kill bad guy. A lot of them are. Most of them. Some of them are quite different. Some of them have you, you know, filtering things out of the Blessing Discard pile. Some of them have a one stack that you have to dig down to the bottom of that stack. So there's a lot of different, there's a lot of variability uh, in both first and second edition Pathfinder Adventure Card Game. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do my free explore. And then I can use other cards to possibly do other explorers. For example, I could discard this fox to explore my location. But remember, I don't want to just discard willy-nilly. Right. I actually it's your want life. To, it is, these 15 cards are our lives. So if I ever have to, if I'm, if I ever get beat by a creature, I have to discard these cards over to here and then I have to draw up to my hand size. And if I can't, you're dead. I'm dead. I have no, have no choice. You can't just not draw up to your hand size. You have to, and then you die. So I found an ambush. No. Everything that is yellow is a barrier or some kind of a trap. The difficulty to defeat the barrier is increased by the adventure deck number of the current scenario. So it's one plus nine is ten. If defeated, you may immediately explore again. If undefeated, examine the location next to you find the monster. Encounter it, subtracting one from each die rolled. Hey, you know what? It's an ambush ten. What? I have thieves tools. Good. Discard this card to defeat a barrier whose highest difficulty to defeat is eleven or lower. It's a ten. Yay! So that's good. Yay! My wisdom is a D6. I don't have much chance. No. My dexterity is a D8. I'm still too short. Still two points short. You're calling yourself short? I'm a... (laughs) You tell me. Is he a little short? He looks a little short. He's a little short. (laughs) So, I'm going to discard the Thieves tools. I could succeed at a Disable 8 check to recharge the card. There's a problem. I don't have the Disable skill. I have Disable. Anytime you are supposed to roll on a skill and you don't have it then you have to roll a d4 instead. Yeah. Which, I'm not going to roll an 8 on a d4. Obviously bad. <laughs> so, anyway, I took care of the ambush. That ambush... Scott asked, what does the flavor text on the, on the fox say? <laughs> there is actually no flavor text on no the fox. No flavor text. <laughs> what is the flavor text? <laughs> That's so good. And, uh... 
What a fun coincidence. Just tuned in and I'm currently playing Pathfinder Kingmaker. Nice. How about, I think I've got that. I just haven't ever played it. Mm. So uh, if you do like a game like this, um, the Pathfinder Adventure Card Game is on Steam. It is on iOS. It is fun to play. So I would highly recommend it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And we'll be playing it on here. Bunch, and we'll be playing it on probably. here. <laughs> and it will be slightly different from this scenario because this scenario, again, is one that's a print-on-demand from Paizo. Right. So, uh, I took that out, and it said I may immediately explore again, remember? Mm -hmm. So, hey, it's a free explore. Yay! It's a Warhammer. Oh. Um, I don't have much chance to get that. Oh. Um, it's a strength or melee check, uh, and it's a six. Is it something that you would want? For your combat check, reveal this card to roll your strength or melee plus 1d8. You may additionally discard, or for you, recharge... Well, to add another 1d6. I have a I have a power that says recharge a card that has a bludgeoning trait to add 1d6 to a combat check by another player at your location. Combat check and your location. This so, is neither a combat check right. nor the same location. We are in different locations. No, I know. But, but what I'm yeah. saying is it's bludgeoning. Therefore, it's kind of good. It's kind but, of good for you. how often are we going to be in the same location? I just don't know. Well, uh, when I, I have a lot of cards in my discard pile, I'm probably going to come over there and start feeding you 1d4s and recharging both my cure and a random card from my discard pile. So, I, yes, uh, it is coming soon. I just don't know if we should bless you yeah, to the, try and get The question it. is, is blessing, even with 2d4, it's not likely to hit a 6. Well, that's what I mean. It's still so, not great. So I will just We'll find let it again it one go. day, maybe. <laughs> let it go. Maybe. Let it go. Can't get the Warhammer. All right. So, I may at this point spend a Blessing or a Fox in order to explore again. But we're not... We don't have we're to push the clock rush. yet. I'm going to draw up to my hand size. Oh, More another blessing. blessing. And we like... So, I'm going to do the Blessings back and forth to basically let myself know that I have indeed done it once for each character's turn, back Look and forth and back and forth. This, this is one of Steph's favorite this might, cards. Oh, it's so good. It's all rainbow. Who can guess why? <laughs> it's so pretty. So, um, whenever, um, whenever I have one of these blessings of the gods, the blessing of the gods says, I can treat this card as if it were one of these cards on top of the discard pile. So currently... I can add one die to a check or two dice to a non-combat wisdom check. So if for some reason a wisdom check comes up, we could play those blessings. The blessing of the gods uh, on you. Sorry. All right. You are exploring the woods right there. Yeah. Here we go. You found quarter staff. a quarter staff. All right. That's a buck and a quarter quarter staff. All right. So it's a three. It's not going to be great for you, but hey, it is a bludgeoning weapon. That's I true. mean, it'll be good for now, if even if you don't keep it. Now, it's got the basic trait. She could have started with this if she wanted it, but it's not a great weapon. It's not great. What do I need to roll? A three on melee. I think it's, it's a auto. It's melee. It's auto. Yeah. <laughs> because the lowest you can roll is one, and you get plus two. I have plus two. That's yeah. a three. Boom. It goes in your hand, and you discard down if you are over your hand size. You or don't I get to like recharge it in. If I or you can keep going, and it's not a bad idea. Yeah. Because, you know, you have an extra card. I mean, I would have to use my blessing, but I have another one. What about your quartermaster? Yeah, I could, but you can also use that one. She could not every ally lets things. you explore again. Most do, some she, do not. Yeah, but she is could be really good at acquiring something really good later. She could. So I'm gonna use this blessing. Using the blessing just to explore again. So. Flip it up and I'll throw it on the screen. I should, oh. I should have thrown mine up on the screen too. It's a cultist. He has got a combat nine. If he's undefeated, we're going to shuffle the top card of the blessings deck into this locations deck. So that would be this right there. So what do I got to... You got to... It's a nine to defeat. Hmm. That's not hard. Not super hard. Okay. What you got? So I got this dog slicer, or I got the quarter staff, which I could just use. I mean, he's not, he's only a nine. What do you got? So I have a D10 as my base. D10? Where is it? Dice. Me. So we've got a whole slew of dice here. <laughs> some of which are, some of which are very rainbow. Yes. Like, look at that. Look how 
Well, I don't even know if you can see how awesome that is. But yeah, fantastic rainbow die. I mean, I might as well. So if I use the quarter staff for my combat check, reveal this card to roll your melee, which is plus, plus two, 1d6. Plus 1d6. You may additionally and discard to add another 1d6, which for you is just a recharge. Which is a recharge, so why wouldn't I? Why would you not? I'm just going to recharge that. I got all, all right. this. And I'm plus two. So on average, she's going to roll a seven plus two is nine. Plus five and a half is fourteen and a half. Seems so really good. You can see it's already like five and a half over fit over average. Seems really Six, good. Six, ten, fifteen. 15. <laughs> plus two is seventeen. So that cultist is goners. Yeah, I did. Killed it. I'll be done. Yeah, because you have three cards and now you can draw up to a four. Her hand size is different from mine. So this represents that fighters are not very versatile, but they if they get their entire hand wiped because they get their butt kicked, then it's not going to take a lot of their life away. Me, on the other hand, I'm very versatile, but if I get my hand wiped, that's what? That's 40% of my life psh, gone just like that. Yeah, that's could, not could good. Really bad. That's not good at all. Yeah. All right, flipping up another blessing. Tick tock. Good luck. Good luck. How about a goblin <gasps> commando? You have to roll a die. Number one, it's a goblin. So, before you the encounter, the goblin uh, is going to deal one ranged combat damage to me. So, one card, boop, is going to get knocked out of my hands, just like that. Whoa. But, before anything happens, we're going to roll that d6. When you encounter a with a goblin, tree! Two. It's a plus ten. It's a nineteen! <laughs> 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 Uh, I'm going to Scorching Ray him, maybe. <laughs> 19? Yeah. Plus, he's going to do one. He's going to do one damage to me. So, Al, goodbye, Fox. All right. Wow. So, I do have a chance here. I get a D12 plus two. And I'm going to get two D6 with the fire trait. At this location, I get a one D6 when I use fire. So that's not bad. Let's see what this comes out turns out to be. Seven, ten and a half, plus two is twelve and a half, plus six and a half is nineteen. Is average. Is an, is an average it. an average shot that's against this horrible. I, I think I'm gonna bless it. Okay. So Make it a little a, bit you more. Get a, a 12? I get a twelve because twelve is my base stat. It's my charisma. All, All right. right. Well, that's really good then. Yeah. Now it's looking real good. One, 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 one. Uh, it's not that far off. Um, eight and six off. is fourteen. Two is sixteen. One is seventeen. Two is nineteen. I had four left over. So, yeah, I, neither of both of those twelves were over that. Were over the four. So I needed the extra bless. Yeah, for sure. God, that sucked. For a little baby goblin commando. <laughs> Plus 10 is huge, guys. That's like... Especially in the first round. <laughs> yeah, that was bad. So, with the Scorching Ray, I can actually recharge this if I can roll an Arcane 8. On a 12 plus 2, I got it. I'm going to keep one this 12 over here. So, I'm going to recharge that instead of discarding it. However, I now have three cards in my discard pile. I might actually come over there and start helping you out. So I'm going to draw back up, yeah. drawing three cards, one and two and three. Look at, holy mackerel. How about blessing? Blessing, 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 cure, cure. Badger, 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 badger. Badger, badger, badger. I got itch on my back. I've been trying to get for the entire scenario. Here we go. <clears throat> How about a potion of healing? Uh, maybe you can give that to me and I can help your, <laughs> help sure. your things. So. It is an intelligence craft five. Well, maybe not. It depends on how smart you are. D10 plus one. What? I got craft. You are super smart. I'm not intelligent. No, you're super I've crafty. Craft. I've got craft. You do have a craft. That's not a 10. Your craft is strength plus one? It's right, right on top. That's why that's it's good. weird. That's, why that's it... weird. Craft is usually tied, not always, usually tied to wisdom or intelligence. This is tied to strength. That's really fantastic. I make crafty weapons. You do. <laughs> Well, you're probably going to get this potion. 
Nor not. Or not. Uh, <laughs> roll, I don't know if you I see it over here. One. She rolled a one. Ouch. Goodbye, potion of healing. That was too bad. That's it's not the end of the world. It's not, but losing I, boons I is had not a horrible. Good shot at getting that. Um, I guess I should. So even if you've played this scenario before, the things that pop up are always going to be different. So that's why this game is replayable. And replayable and replayable. I think I'm just going to stop. That sounds good. You're just going to quit? Good. You're going to quit? I'm just going to quit. We're just done. Gonna quit. We're done. Uh. Mm. All right. I'm going to get a drink while you take your drink. I do not have any weapons. No weapons? I got a weapon. I have no weapons. I have a lot of weapons. Well, that's nice to be you. Uh. Um... <laughs> I'm uh, so I've already encountered one monster here. There are three more in the old light. How many monsters have you found? One. Yeah. There's so many monsters in these locations. There's only two at the city gate. You know what? I may just take the coward's way out. Come over to you and not do anything for my turn. But if you find somebody, can I help you fight him? No. No? You cannot. If there's two combat checks, yes. But um, those are rare. Yeah, if I had a swashbuckling trait, I would be able to help you. Yeah, I can help you. And okay. sort of pre-cure myself a little bit. Okay. So I'm going to take the coward's way out temporarily because I, I have no <laughs> weapons in my hand. I would have found a goblin pyro. Oh. Well, that sucks. Right. After the encounter, he deals one damage to you. Whatever. So, first of all, you have to roll a d6. I'm gonna do that because of the scenario. Two. It's a so it's a it's a 18 goblin pyro. So wait, why is it plus 10? What read that one again? Yeah, read it. I can't see that. Plus 10. The difficulty is increased by 10. There's nothing That's I twice can do we've done just that. to like not do that? Nope. Alrighty, cool. Uh, you, can, uh, you can play something that lets you evade him, but no, no, that no. doesn't I mean, exist. I mean, I can take him. I'm just, you know, you wondering. Can, well, why don't you take him? I am going to help you out by recharging a card to add 1d4. Ooh. And it has the healing trait, so I'm going to recharge a card from my discard pile. How about... Choose one of these. This one. I get this fox back at my... Back in my draw pile. And see, that opens up space in my hand size. So that's good for me. Okay, reveal this to roll one plus a d6. Um, I'm going to discard by What's discard. The, oh, that's I mean, mine. recharge for a d6. Yep, seems good. That's what I've got. That's so what you got. Doesn't seem like enough. <laughs> Derek is... <laughs> yep. Um, uh, I can bless you. I might need it. Uh, you have a lot of blessings. I do. But well, it also opens up my hand size, and I can slowly heal as I go. Where's the D, another D10? Uh. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck to me. Good luck to you. How about... Ooh. Holy ooh, crap. Ooh, ooh, a 10, an 8, a 5, a 4, a 1, plus 2. I just needed the two D10s. I didn't need anything Wow. Else. How many over it? So, like, you... It was This is the over. one I gave you because it was the one I fetched. This one here. Yeah, it was So, you were already at 22. Yeah. So, yeah, you didn't need my help. I guess not. You didn't need I didn't need my know. help. I you didn't know. Well, Goodbye, go. Didn't. Oh, and he deals one fire damage to you. I'm, I can recharge this. It's combat damage, right? No, it's, this is fire damage. Oh. Because it says fire damage. So I have to discard something. Yep. No. How about those bracers? <laughs> you don't have to. You can do You can just go whatever. Ouch. Ouch. Whatever. All right, since you found yet another monster, maybe it's safer? I don't... I don't know. I'm still scared. Get nothing for beating up monsters. It stinks. <laughs> Why can't I just steal his awesome sword or whatever? How many are left? One, two, three, four, five, six. Two out of four monsters. 
So that means there are two monsters and and the a thing. Bad so it's guy. a fifty-fifty shot for being or something really bad. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna pass for now Ooh. and draw up. And I got my scorching ray, so I'm good. So now you're good. All so right. you want to try to avoid doing what I just did twice? Mm. You want to try to avoid it's doing that? Fine. It's an ambush. Okay, I got my Maddox, so That's I'm ready. good. What does it say? Uh, it's a difficulty ten, wisdom, perception, dexterity, acrobatics. No. Nope. None of those. What's the Maddox say? Um, recharge this exactly. card to use Scott. strength melee. And in place of a normal skill check to defeat a barrier with a lock or obstacle. No lock, no obstacle. Yeah, that's what I was it's afraid a skirmish of. skirmish and veteran. Uh. And so, not looking good. I have a blessing. but I have a blessing. I, uh... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is bad. So, so what's, your, what's your dex? Oh, I have a wisdom, right? What's no. your dex? What's your wisdom? Wisdom D8. So, it's not as bad as I thought. That's not terrible. You just passed in D8. All right. I'm going to bless it. All right, you're going to bless it. Unless you want to bless it. Well, we might need both. Because two eights will give you an average of a nine. It's a ten you need. So I'm going to bless it. Ouch. All right. Uh, I could actually, I could recharge a card <laughs> to recharge a random card. Because it's any check. Instead of giving you a D8, I can give you a D4. Okay. If you fail, then you're all you're going to do is you're going to find a monster, encounter it, subtract one from each die rolled. So it's not the end of the world if you miss it. Did it. 8, 12, 15. Did it. Fine colors. Yes, and other things. So, you may immediately explore again. Goodbye, ambush. Okay. Uh, how about a goblin raider? Oh. Notice, this is a red goblin raider. It's the henchman. That means Gogmert is not in here. Also, part of this Goblin Raider says if you defeat this guy, you can automatically attempt to close the location. And that's where you try to apply the close ability. Closing a location is very good. We're trying to do that. All right. If this thing is undefeated, you're going to bury an item or weapon of your choice from your discard pile. All right. So roll your d6. It's a six. Bury a random card from your discard pile. And I guess you just encounter it as normal. Okay. Bury is not bad. Bury just means it's gone for this scenario. Under the mat. What is it? Um, my bracers. Your bracers? Not a big deal. Yeah. You can you can get new ones when we get home. Alright, so all right. All right. When, after you defeat him, you are going to have to do a Wisdom or Survival 6 check. I can help you out with that as well. So that will be good. Alright, so I got a, D, a D10. A D10. Plus 2, right? It's melee I can do, right? Plus 2, yes. And two D4s. Yes. Wow, you don't even need my help on this one, I think. How, why? How hard is he? He's an 8. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm plus 2, so... That's really good. Yeah, and you're already rolling three dice, so at a minimum, you're going to roll a five out of eight. <laughs> Chances look... Oh, I can additionally discard this to add another d4 if I need it. If you needed it, I can recharge one of these for d4. Eh. Eh. How about seven, ten, twelve, plus two is fourteen? It's a dead goblin raider. I'm going to keep him to the side here because there are a couple of these things that require a goblin raider. All right. So now I succeed. A uh, wisdom or survival six. You don't have survival, I'm guessing. But you do have wisdom. I do. All right, so that's a D8. I can either bless you or I can give you a D4 recharge. Or uh, both. I could do both. I'm fine with either. I do think I need something. Well, we don't want to miss it. I no. mean, how many are left? There are four left. So I'm going to I'm gonna bless you and recharge this codex. So I get a D4 and a D8. A D4 so and a D8. I got two D8s and D4. Yep. Good luck. Good luck. Get a six. Six. Four. That's twelve. Yeah. It, it it sounds better than it was because it's a six four two. It looks really bad. The things that we will not have to encounter in here is a zombie giant, a slashing blade, a giant gecko, and a potion of ghostly form. That's Those fine. just go to the discard pile fine to the with box this. rather. And then we flip that over. It's now closed. We flip that over. It is now permanently closed. Yay! That's one location closed. We are still at the woods now. There's flavored. 
on one side it tells everything about it. On the other side, it's a really cool flavor text. Generally, you get a cool bonus, but not this time. Yeah. So, we don't automatically move. We have to move on our turn as you do. I'm going to move back over to the old light temporarily. And I'm going to find a Yes Hound. Uh-oh. Yes. Uh-oh. Yes. Yes? Yes. 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 Y E S. Before the encounter, each character at your location must succeed at a wisdom six check, or the difficulty of her checks is increased by one for the rest of the turn. Oh. The gecko could have sold us. You know, if we had waited 15 minutes, you think what? <laughs> you know what we could have done? Saved. We could have saved a lot. <laughs> we could have just waited 15 minutes. Oh, I forgot to flip my blessing, by the way. That's why we do it back and forth like this. That's all, how we how we remember. All right. So, um, I don't care if I pass this check or not um, because I'm going to have to burn it with a uh, ray anyway. I did not pass. So, my difficulty goes up by one. Instead of a nine, it's going to be a ten. I'm going to, of course. <laughs> At least it's not a 19. <laughs> I'm going to scorching ray this dude. Um, I need a D12 and two D6s, three D6s. Because I am at the old light location, which likes fire. There is no chance I'm going to fail this, and then I roll all one. Oh, my God. Oh, a 12, a 6, a 6, a 1. Plus, 25. Plus 2. <laughs> plus 2. You're Don't ready. forget the plus You're 2. You're ready for level 3 path. <laughs> hey, I think I am. Oh, that was luck. All right, so now I have to do an arcane 8 check to recharge. 3. 3 plus 2 is 5. It goes in the discard pile, oh. sadly. Um, so I've already got, what, four cards in my discard pile. Those not great. And draw back up. One, two, three, four. I've got five cards left to no. draw. This is what we call in the Should I come over there zone. too or no? Um, it's going to take intelligence or knowledge to close. I would recommend just going to the city gate or the city goblin gate. fortress. Either one I think is good. Oh, I could defeat the goblins. Yeah, the goblins. How about Sheriff Hemlock? Ooh. Sheriff Hemlock's an ally. If you can convince him to come over to your side, he will stay in your deck as long as you have make space for him in your allies. So, this is a charisma diplomacy check. What's your charisma? Nothing. D4. Yeah, I got nothing. So <laughs> That's a D4, right? probably going to be like, Hey, I don't fool. want to join you. Fool. Fool. <laughs> All right, well, goodbye, Sheriff Hemlock. You're really crafty. Uh, oh, wait, you forgot to do your blessing there. Yeah, that's it for me. That's it for you and my blessing. A row, row. Oh, I got my Scorching Ray back. Mirror Image Spell. Mm -hmm. If I can get this Mirror Image Spell, it stays in my deck. It's not great. Intelligence Arcane, I do have that. My Arcane is a D12 plus 2. Uh, how about a 12? Wow, you're wasting really good rolls. I have, yeah, I am. Now I have the Mirror Image. I should probably try to, I mean, we're, we're, uh, I don't know if we're running out of time yet, but I do have an extra card in my hand, so I probably need to do something. This card, the Troubadour. Good luck. An Attic Whisperer. It looks like Cubone. Oh, the, it does, doesn't it? The Pokemon. The Pokemon. Before the encounter, each character at your location has succeeded a Wisdom 4 check or be dealt one mental damage, which may not be reduced. Players must choose a Blessing to discard as their damage if they have any. Oh, I do. Oh, I do. Wisdom 4, oh, and I roll to roll a D6. Mm -hmm. Oh, look, it's a Yeth Hound. Ha. <laughs> I got my 4, yes. No mental damage for me, dude. All right, time to burn him. Uh, oh, I could like crossbow him. I could like crossbow him. It would be a dex plus d8. It's only an average of a nine with what I've got. I guess I'll use the scorching ray while I'm here at the old light. Uh, Seems he's really, he's toasted. Really good. Yeah, that. Huh. And I'm surprised it's a basic spell. I mean, it's really good. So then I'm gonna try to recharge it instead of discarding it. I need an arcane eight. I got. Wow! I am on fire! Twelve. D12 rolls a twelve again. D12 rolls a twelve again. Uh, 
I mean, that is the fire spell, so I suppose it, it is. makes sense. Drawing up. There. I might even cure myself because I do have five cards yeah. right now. Okay. I mean, I'll get those back into my That's true. thing. And my it'll put the scorchings like further up. So you. Uh, a troubadour. Hey. Uh, it'll be nice if you have a dexterity or charisma, but otherwise. That's it. That's, yeah. Uh, or acrobatics or diplomacy, which are usually under dexterity of charisma. <laughs> no. No. Troubadour goes off to the discard pile. I, mean, I could I, get him. My dexterity is a six. My dexterity is a D eight. My charisma is a D twelve. Plus two he? for diplomacy. Uh, a seven or a six. I mean, what dex, do you have? Dexterity six. You have a dexterity six? No, that's a seven. What's your charisma? It's a four. Yeah, bad. Which bad. needs a six. Yeah. No, I could bless you for it, but it's not nah. that. It's a basic card. It's not yeah. great. Nah. <laughs> Fine, you go. Fine, me go. Um, I'm actually now. I don't have to cure on my turn. I could have cured while that was on her turn. I need a D four. I can't find a D four way down there in the woods. One. One really? Uh, I I heal two, I heal two cards. I heal a thief's tools and a troubadour. Wow, Healing puts it in, shuffles it into your deck instead right. of recharges it into your deck. Yeah. So yeah. that's good. Can you get it back or is it gone? Um. Yeah, I'll, I'm actually doing this at the end of your turn. At the start of my turn, I can discard a spell, and then add a spell from my discard pile to my hand. So if I miss it, I get it back in my hand. That's the good part. Six plus two is eight. Well, it's not on my discard pile, but that means I'm going to use my. I'm going to use it for at the start of your turn. You may discard a spell and add a spell from your discard pile to the hand. Scorching ray comes back, mm. which gives me something to shoot with. Whoops! What did I put in there? I put the light crossbow in there. I meant the mirror image. I have to put a spell for a spell. That's my ability. Mm -hmm. So that's good. All right, I'm going to explore this old light again. Good luck. Uh, a ghost. No. A ghost. He's immune Boo. to metal and poison. <laughs> <laughs> well done. <laughs> wow. 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 Who saw right through that? Oh. Um, the ghost is immune to the metal and poison traits. <laughs> if your check to defeat does not have the magic trait, he's undefeated. Well, hey. I'm going to burn him again. Burn, baby, burn. And since I'm at the old light, I get that extra D6. That's really good for me. Ba -bow. Oh, that's not great. But it's good enough. That's 13, 13 plus 2 is 15. I only need... Oh, I needed a 12. It does indeed have the magic trait, so... <laughs> Sizzle. So, that was good. So there's a card called uh, Holy Light that clerics can get. Oh, oh holy light. light. And I like uh, Kill Undead with it. It's really good. Um, I'm going to try to recharge it. 12. Bam! I am on target today. Wow. It's on fire. It's, uh, why don't so, I roll it? Like, I've only got three more cards left. It's going to be a goblin in one of them, or Gogmert, which is a goblin, I guess. Boop, boop, look at that cure right to the top. Well, you have two. Well, on purpose. Oh, you didn't do this, I guess. For reasons. No, it's Oh, me. I didn't. No, it's you. Good luck. I'm trying to keep good track of that, but I'm not. Oh, enchanter. Oh, I hate the enchanter. Oh, you no. want to know why I hate the enchanter? She's a black witch. You know why I hate her, though? Oh, problems. The difficulty is increased by the adventure deck number, so she's a nine, but that's not the bad part. Before the encounter, she deals a force damage to you. After the encounter, she deals a fire damage to you. We got problems. She's horrible. Okay. She's not hard to kill, but she's a horrible, horrible. Alright. Horribleness. So I have to do that first. Alright, Matic. Yeah, that's before the encounter, yes. Now I take it. Now a, you can rape her. Yeah. She is using her rapier. 
to cut a Zoro mark into the Enchanter. That's two D fours, right? Oh, you know what? You forgot to tell everybody uh, about your alliance here with your quartermaster. So Vika and the quartermaster is the uh, white hair girls uh, club right there. Yeah. So, <laughs> and and then Lem said, "I'm not a girl," and she said, "I meant just me and the quartermaster." <laughs> and I was like, "I'm not in a club." Nope. So yeah, that made me sad. All right, Vika and the quartermaster. You're using your rapier, and what does it say? You need a uh, your strength plus two d four plus your melee skill. Is that enough for a nine? Uh, is this enough for a nine? So that's an average. The two d four is an average of a five plus five and a half is ten and a half plus two is twelve and a half. So it seems pretty good. Seems pretty good. It's not it's not a deadlock, but it is pretty good. Uh, that's a seven, a four, and a four. I'd say that's pretty darn good. 15 plus two. And I think you need to take your one fire damage. I think it's going to be her. Did you no. have to recharge that? No. No. I didn't you did not use even it for use the it. Extra nice. What you gonna just? What you gonna discard? I think her. Ouch. What do you think? Well, yeah, I mean, that the, I no, mean, it's good. If I have a barrier, if you have a barrier, it's gonna you're gonna be a want problem, it. So. Uh, there is one barrier in that deck. There are. There's one barrier in this deck. And there's one in this deck which I've already found. And you're going to draw up. I got some weapons. Uh, zoop. All right. I have a light crossbow, so technically I have a weapon. I'm just not real good at it. Uh, levitate spell. It's not great. Um, it's at the end of your turn. Discard this card to move a willing character. Any movement restrictions still apply. Well, that will get me to your location, and I can just go back to the old light. It's not great, though. Hey, thanks for following, Wotel. Hey, thanks for following. Yay! So, all I need is a 6 to acquire this thing, so... Uh, how about a 12? <laughs> Always. On fire! I think that's like this is my favorite die! I think it's, <laughs> like, I think it's like... It's like the that's my 4th, 5th, 12 I've rolled. I mean, that's geez. really good. Uh, I don't have a way to explore again unless I use my blessing, sadly. Well, you have another one, but uh, I don't know. I have another you. one what? Blessing. I do have another blessing. So, uh, how about a goblin raider? Oh, crap. I got to use the light crossbow against it. All right, rolling, rolling the d6. I am burying a random card from my oh. discard pile. This one. Bloop. I am burying a blessing. Not a big deal. So that's uh, that's gone for a minute. Or all night. If, I was, if he's undefeated, I bury a weapon of my choice from my discard pile. I'm going to use my light crossbow. My dexterity is a D8. My light crossbow is a D8. I'm going to bless it. It's a D8. Give me some D8s. Eight. 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 I need three eights. Eight. 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 Uh, oh, I'm going to have to do an intelligence or knowledge six check. That's not going to be great. Eight. Uh, you're not going to be able to bless me. But you know what? I'm at the bottom of my stack. I don't care if I miss it. Yeah. Wow. Uh, oh. Eight, nine, ten. He's an eight. It's okay, guys. Ooh. We got this. You got two ones and an eight. That's really bad. <laughs> it's like, I saw the ones, I'm like, oh. Uh, it's one of those rolls, isn't it? <laughs> All right, so now I have to do a intelligence or knowledge six check. Now, since this was a henchman, I get a chance to close. If I fail, I have to go to the bottom of the stack, clear the stack, and then try to close it. Fortunately, it's just one more card in here. Right, so. So if I fail it, not the end of the world, but I'd I'd like to do it. Uh, my intelligence, sadly, is a D6. My knowledge adds plus two to it. I It's a half chance. Need a four. Good luck. You missed. I missed, I missed the uh, dice tray. It's, one plus two is three. That a is a miss. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. So, yep, it's not closed yet. Okay. Drawing back up. What does the fox say? Oh, there's a fox. That's a, that's a Lamashtu fox. Here we go. Oh, oh it's Gogmert. Boom. Oh. So, we can't close the city gate over here. No one is here. So, at a minimum, he's going to escape. 
<laughs> Nay, TZO said. Before the encounter, he's going to deal 1d4 minus 1 fire damage to you. You may not play allies with the animal trait. All damage from Gogmert is fire damage. Mm -hmm. So, you will have to do a combat 10, then a combat 12. There are two checks on him. Plus, he is a goblin. Guess what that means? There's your roll. Six. It's a six. Bury a random card from your discard pile. Now, this is only, that D6 thing that we're doing is only for this Goblin's Gross scenario. It'll change. The adventure yeah, always goblins changes. goblins are gross. Because Go goblins are gross. I'm losing my mad talk. Mad talk. Rhymes with butt talk. All right, so I have to roll a D4 minus one. Um, first, I am going to try to temporarily close my location, giving him one fewer place to run away to. That'd be great. So. Good luck. I'm going to roll it. 50, 50. I can recharge this fox to add 1d4 to this check. Or I can save it for when I close it myself. Well, you, you might have to take him on then, so you might as well use the fox while you got him. Give me the default. How about that? Six and one. Did so it's it. It's temporarily closed. It is temporarily closed. So you tap him sideways. Just to show. All right. Now, remember, the difficulty to defeat goblins here is increased by two. So it's not a 10 and a 12. It's a 12 and a 14. But I first have to take damage. First, you have to take 1d4 minus one fire damage. How about one minus one? Yes. yes. Well. So he missed you with the fire damage. That's fantastic. Okay, so with my long spear, I will get a d10 and a d8. And if I fail to check, I may discard this card to ignore the results of the rolled die. A d10 and a d8? Is that enough, do you think, for the first check? Plus two. Plus two. <coughs> you need a 12. You are at an average of a 10. But if but if you I miss, fail, you can, can re you can redo it But I don't it know again. if I could get in the second shot. Or if I, I could just... Well, your second that. shot, you need to use something bigger. -er. Or you can use something bigger -er now. Well, the bigger... -er, I have these two. Which okay. I can recharge to get more dice. Well, let's see what you got. So this rapier gives me a d10, two d4s, and recharge for one d4. So d10, three d4? Yeah, that's the rapier. All right. The long sword is... A D10. I'm still looking for the D4. All right. The other one's a D10 and a what? A D8. And a D8. And a D6. And a D6. That's clearly the best one you've I, got. Right. That was the best That's going to be on the last check. And I have no blessings here, unfortunately. I right. mean, I was flush with blessings. So the long spear gives me the chance to re-roll it if I fail. Yeah. Which uh, is pretty powerful. It's pretty powerful. Uh, one roll or the other. you got to roll 12. So... Right. And then the other roll, you got to roll a 14. Right. So uh, that's an average seven and a half, eight, and five is 13. This is 13 plus two is 15 average. Okay. So you're a little over average with this. This one is an average. Of, when you have an eight and a 10, when you have an eight and a 10, average is the bigger die. When you have two dice next to each other in the hierarchy, you know, four, six, eight, ten. Mm -hmm. Easy way to figure it is that the average is... Um, is the higher die is a 10 so 10 13 and a half plus 2 is 15 and a half this is slightly better than 15 and a half here 15 here and only 10 here 12 here it's only 12 here but you do get a uh you do get the re-roll so what are you feeling uh i think 12 and a re-roll seems fairly decent because you're gonna have two shots at it yeah it's a 50 50 and then another 50 50. Yeah. So that's pretty good. How about a one and a three is four plus two is six? That's a All fail. Right, so, so now you're going to... Humor made this. Am I using the card's ability? Yes, you are. So I would actually recharge. Yes. To get, I to have get the to second take a result. second result. Yeah. So, but don't miss this one. Well, I mean... <laughs> Seven and nine is 16. Did it. That's the first one done. <laughs> now, had I been there, I could have taken the first or the second check because there's two combat checks. I'm not at her location, so 
Now I'm gonna use the long sword. Now you can use the long sword, which is the the ten eight six. Yeah. Plus two. So you're looking for a fourteen. Or a rolled twelve. <laughs> That's a five. <laughs> I rolled a five. So you're gonna recharge this anyway though. Yeah, that was recharged. recharged. So I'm going to lose my other cards. You are going to lose your other cards. And Gogmert is going to escape. <sighs> and since there's two locations, he can, so what happens is, if he would have been defeated, Gogmert would have ran here, and this would have been closed. Here's what's going to happen instead. Gogmert's going to run to one of these two locations, and if he had been defeated, he would have pulled from the box. No, he's going to pull one of these cards from the from the Blessing discard pile. I'm going to shuffle these around here a little bit. Oh, Pizio is uh, uh, holding his head. And then I you're going to put you one in each stack. You can't take me anywhere. You're going to put one in each stack. And then we are going shuffle. to shuffle up, I guess. So we know now that... Gogmert has run away. He's in one of these two stacks. Yes. Well, we know he probably wasn't in the old night. I've been all the way through it. Well, right. <laughs> we know he's not there. So. Well, that's... Well, Okay. My good, hand, good my job. Hand wasn't wiped though. That's bad. Your hand as was wiped, wiped. As bad as it would have been years. worse with me. Yes. Uh, How many cards do you have in your discard pile? A lot. I have two buried and five in the discard. Well, that's not great. Well, what's not great is that I'm not gonna have a weapon. Well, I'm, I can come over there and oh, heal you. I got you. a weapon. All right. All right. I can come over and heal you. Oh, you have a shield. Okay. That seems good too. All right, it's my turn. <laughs> we might not, we might not win this one. Uh, hey, I've got a bar for crows. Cool. Otherwise known as a crow bar. Uh, you know what? No, I didn't need to. I didn't need to do my little switcheroo. I am going to try to get it. If I don't get it, not a big deal. How about? Nope, I didn't get it. Goodbye, crowbar. Rolled a two. I rolled a two. Well, Wait. I mean, I only had a four. I could roll. You do get to try and roll for the closing, right? Yes, I do. All right, that's good. Please get it. Please get it. No. Nope. So oh, I'm going to stay there. Wow. Um, I can levitate over to your location. Mm, I'm levitating over to you. Okay. Are you staying here at the Goblin Fortress? I was going to, yeah. I'm levitating over to you, and then I'm going to try to recharge it. <laughs> it's looking bad with that. Oh, you, you've used up all your 12s. I've used up all my 12 quota is done for the night. Yeah, all the ones are coming out now. Now you can't attempt to murder the goblin. <laughs> <laughs> Explosion of rainbow boogers. Explosion of boogers. All right, so it's me. Yeah, I'm wondering if I should cure myself or cure you. <laughs> it's not looking good. Nah, I don't need it yet. All right, tick tock. Good luck. Good luck. Uh how about a holy candle? Yes! If you can get it. It's a wisdom divine. What do you got for wisdom? D8. D8? All right. Um, I can give you a D8 plus D4. I don't have my girl up anymore. Your girl up? Yeah. What so. girl? The girl that helps me get thing boons, but... Oh, do, you, do you not want the D4? Holy candle seems really it's good. It's really good. That's why I, mean, I, I mean, I'm not blessing. I could bless it if you really thought you wanted it. I mean, I could bless it, too. Yeah, you're I running short on cards, blessing. though. Not, well, yeah, okay. Damn. All right, what I can do instead of doing the cure, what I can do is I can bless. It's two D8s. And instead then I can D4. cure, I can cure my, well, I can do the cure. I can do the, I can do the D4 as well. I'm going to do my burglar. And I'm still probably going to cure myself instead. This will probably get enough back into the pile. That's a 14. Okay. And then if you do this now, it's 1d6 cards right now. It's Barry. It's, it's, yeah, it's, no, it's, it is Barry. Oh, so and you, I get to keep that. You get to keep that's it. That's why, that's the only reason oh, why I said. The, the reason why I took it away is because on the computer game, it's Spanish. Okay. I'm like, because that's why I keep, I mean, that seems yeah, really it's good. Really, I can add that into it's my really good. rotation. Come what? On. Are you kidding me? So I'm just going to take one of these at random here and put it back into the discard pile. Uh, one. Sorry. Did that for I think one. I might just go again. Well, maybe I shouldn't. Uh, it's hard to say. I was going to go over to the old light and close it. <laughs> I 
know. Oh, I just, my turn. We're running out we, of time. Well, we are. We've got five, ten, twelve. Oh, you want me to bless you on the closing? Well, if you do find the bad guy, he's going to run. That's true. I don't, I don't need a blessing on the close. I was just going to try to do it. So. Uh, I mean, you're running low on cards, so I don't know. All I right, mean, all right, that's fine. You're, I mean, you're running real yes. low on cards. Yeah. It's not great, yes. but, I mean, what options do we have? Um, I'm going to try to close it, obviously. Three uh, plus two is five is a miss. I can't get it. I seriously just can't get it. Um, I'm going to try to cure myself. Hey. There, I got five cards in. Four. That's really good. One, two, three, four, five. All but one card. Shuffle back in. And then I can try to hopefully put this on the bottom of my deck. Nope. Discarded. And then I draw back up. And I can't levitate myself, obviously. Yeah. Four, five, six. I got my scorching ray. <laughs> Charlotte. You, Charlotte. Shauna T wants me to tell you not to run low on cards. <laughs> Goblin Commando. Before the encounter, he's going to deal ranged combat damage to you. Uh, how about a five? The Bane is defeated. Each character at your location is dealt 1d4 acid damage. Don't woohoo too quickly. Oh. 1d4 acid damage. One. What does your buckler do? Does it ever just says combat dealt yeah. by one? All right, what'd you do? You burglar? Burnt yeah. the burglar. Sorry. So, this says before the encounter. This says when you encounter. So, you need to do the ranged combat damage. So, the buckler, it is combat damage. All right, so, so I... you recharge it oh. to, to reduce the combat damage by one. Okay. So, this is before the encounter. This is... When you encounter. Okay. Okay. I mean, you got... Four. <laughs> yeah. You're not looking good. I'm done. You... <laughs> Hopefully you're not done done. I'm going to trade out the mirror image for a cure. <laughs> then I'm going to come over to your location. Then I'm going to say, be cured! Me? Yeah. Yay. Of course. Four. That's Three better. plus one. And then I'm going to try to put this thing back in my discard pile. <laughs> then I'm going to explore, maybe? Yeah. Uh, oh, it's Gogmart! No! How many cards well, I can I help you with your check, and I can, yes, take, you can take care of the other check. Yeah, you can. All right, first he's going to deal 1d4 minus 1 fire damage to me. Uh, how about 3? Is that to you or to one, me too? No, just to me. One, two, three. Ow. Well, I still have a scorching ray, sucker. So you are going to fight him once, is what yes, you're telling me. Yes, and I can help you on your check if you need help. Um, I can probably burn the frack out of this dude. Because I can give you a D6. First, I have to D6 it. Yeah, he might run That was away. before the encounter. Five. You defeated. The bane is defeated. Each character is dealt 1d4 minus well, no, 1d4 acid damage. Uh, three for me. That's both of these cards. I took all the d4s, I think. Yeah, because I can't find them. One. I can't find No, I have a lot over here. Oops. Oh, are you going to... I you gonna, can't hold on to it. Are you going to roll it? I can't hold on to it. How about three? I got three delta. Three What's acid. This? Oh. Banish this card to reduce all damage dealt to me. Uh, that's and Barry, if you're good at armors, you are. Oh yeah, okay. Barry. Barry. But I mean, I could get it back anyway. It's a basic. All right. So whenever you defeat a henchman, you do not have to fulfill the win closing requirements. Also, add one d4 random weapons to this location, and then I get one. So give me a d4. Uh, three. Hmm. I take three random weapons from the box, and I will take one off the top. We should be rolling fives. We just get to we get to do. Boom! You want another long sword? Probably not. It's a basic. All right. So we have avoided a zombie, a lock passage, a staff of minor healing. No! Oh, I wanted it. 
and some ally uh, allying dart that staff of minor healing i love i love it <laughs> i love it i miss it oh, all the goblins are coming out to play derek is playing yes. with the emotes i love it um oh the, you know what wait a second the old light never got closed that's true oh uh, so um give me you need to fetch him back is this him yeah all right, I'm going to take one blessing from the box. I'm going to shuffle these up. It's going to the old light and to the city gate. Take one. I'm going to put this in here. He's escaped to one of those locations. I'm scared to go over there now. But you know what? It might be him. But this is now closed, though, right? This is now closed. We can go there for weapons. Yes. But I don't know. Time's running a little short. So. Yes. Now, I am going to... I. It is the end of... Whoops. It's the end of my turn. Or did you already turn this? No. It is the end of my turn. So, um, before you go, I'm going to cure myself because... All your cards are in your discard. All my card. cards are now in my dude because, well, he burnt the frack out of me. Yeah. One. Oh. One. Oh. Which means two. Should I try and go over to the old light in case he's there? Uh, or should I just go sit at the city gate? You know what? I can, well, it depends on if I can get the other scorching gray into my hand. Uh, I can get the other scorching gray into my hand on my turn. Um, so I should just go here. I can burn the frack out. If he's normal, I can burn the frack out of him. Right. But at the start of my turn, he's going to hurt me a buttload. Um, wait, I need to do something with this cure. Man, put it in my discard pile. Well, I'm, I ought to get the cure back into my hand. Well, I'll just go here and start digging. All right, start digging. Digging, digging, if digging, digging. If you fail digging. a combat check, shuffle a random monster. Yes. Ugh. Good luck. Good luck to you. Goblin dog, it is not a goblin. It's an animal and basic. If undefeated, succeed at a constitution or fortitude eight check or discard the top card of your deck. It's a combat nine. Shouldn't be that hard. Oh, look. This is funny. It's a goblin dog. And what are you fighting it with? A dog slicer. That's the perfect thing to slice a goblin dog with. It's also the perfect thing to slice a yeth hound with, but she wasn't with me. Sounds really good. This is what I got. I got a D10 and a D6 plus 2. D10 and a D6 plus 2. That's a 3.5. 5.5 is 9 plus 2 is 11 average. Good luck. That's all you got? Nope. 8 plus 2 is 10. Missed it by 1. No. It's a 9, I thought. Yeah, it is 9. My fault. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. I was thinking about your average. You didn't get the oh, average. Oh, it counts as a 3. <laughs> and then I would have to discard If any cards, D6... So I is a one, count it as a three, and discard the card. So it was a one. So you. I do this. Yeah, recharge it. I think it's a. I think it's a reach. I'm gonna count it as a recharge. I think it is too. I'm using. The because you chose to not, do not recharge it, but it still said recharge it, and you're using it for its power. So. Yeah. I think it counts. Um. That's right. Well. Good luck. I'm going to trade the Levitate out for a cure, and then I'm going to cure myself. Good luck. Three, three plus, one, plus one, is one is four. That's right. Yep, read your tomes. One, two, three, four. <laughs> read your tomes. My cure did not go back in there, sadly. Nor did my Scorching Ray. That's sucky. I might come over to the city gate with you. Okay. Um, I mean, we still have a little bit of time left. I'm going to try to keep my cure. Oh, there's what I'm looking for. He rolled a 12. I do have... See, here's the issue. If I were to go here and it were to be Gogmert, I've got the Scorching Gray, but then what? A long sword? I mean... Not good enough. It's not good. I do have a Blessing, but yeah. A Blessing of Iomidae. My Charisma is super good. My Divine is even better. Um, D12 plus 2... Wow. Is a he, blessing in my hand. He rolled a 12. And it's a different sort of blessing than what we've been seeing. Yay. So, yeah, that, that's actually a blessing for all of my charisma stuff. So, I will actually keep that, making my character better. I'm going to get rid of one of these blessings of the gods and throw in one of these blessings of Ioma Day. Yep. You know, hopefully we Do succeed. Do you want to keep going or you're done? 
Uh, you know. No, I don't. You know. Oh, I need to give this longsword to you. You know, you know, you know, you know. I can give this longsword to you in a minute. We still have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rounds. You know what? If I had just gone here and sat, that'd be better than him escaping Maybe. there. Maybe. I'm just going to end the turn. Uh, light cross. I will give that longsword to you in a minute. I do need to give it to you sometimes. Slashing Blade, if undefeated, every character in this location is dealt 1d4 combat damage. To dexterity, disable 9. Disable is d6 plus 2. Well, that sucks. I can bless it. Yeah, we're going to have to bless it. The dexterity, what's your dexterity disable? Oh, it d6 is plus, d6 plus, two. plus 2. Uh, yeah, I can bless it. All my disable stuff. Is... All right, 2d6 plus 2. And then, you know what? You know what? Roll a d4 with it, too. All right. No, I don't got... Oh, it's one. Uh, I got... I'm going to throw some, one back in there for you. It takes you forever to like, pick it up. Uh, that's a six. Six plus you know two what? is a... Eight. It's eight. not going to make it. One d4 combat no! damage. Four for me. Oh, my God. There goes the hand wipe. Oh, my God. Three, uh, for, three for you. Wow. That's a great. Mm -hmm. Super. That was so much fun. Yep. Recharge or re redo everything. That goes back in here. Because you didn't defeat it. Derek's, oh no. <laughs> yeah, we're doomed now. That, oh, now my burglar comes up. Whatever burglar you saw. Lamb's going to go over here because you know what? I have nothing to lose. <laughs> ah! It's a blessing of the gods. I automatically acquire it. Now I'm going to try to close right, it. Well, <laughs> well, at least we know this now. Oh, close it. Do you want to bless Yes, it? I closed it. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> I got raided. We got raided. Oh, hey, Jess. Hi, Jess. Sorry, we were just getting hammered on. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, we Raiders. Are, we were getting we're we're getting destroyed here. Oh my goodness! <laughs> <coughs> yeah, they hand wiped me. Oh, that was on my turn. This will be on your turn. I'm going to draw back up. Two, three, four, five, six. Uh, oh, and of course, no spells and nothing to kill anything with. But I can bless like crazy. Oh, I do have a spell. Levitate. We got. Uh, we are playing Pathfinder Adventure Card Game. Yes. This is like the first scenario of our path. Uh, the, goblins gross is what we're playing and here. Goblins are gross. From Season of the Rune Lords, which is a print and play um, Paizo <laughs> add-on scenario. You have to purchase it from Paizo, which we did. We we bought all of it, and <laughs> and it plays using the cards in the Rise of the Rune Lords box. So that's what we're doing. Yes. So you, I've already flipped it. Thank you for the raid. Yeah, absolutely, I'm snack. Give you my little bugger. Derek Yay! says snack beak, but I think he means snack break. Snack beak. <laughs> it's a cape of escape. Oh, hey, let's escape out of this adventure. <laughs> it's not great. No, it's not. It helps me move. Dexterity, and you can't get it anyway. <laughs> I'm a D six, and so you yeah. would have to burglar it or something. I do. I could, but I, I, I no, know that um, I know that there's a stupid obstacle in here, so I'm gonna yep. need him in a second. Yep. <laughs> Goodbye, Cape of Escape. Goodbye. I am going to be done. All right, we are down to four turns left. I can't. I can't. There's nothing we can do. Going, I yeah. mean, there's nothing we can do. Uh. Butterfly effect. Butterfly. Butterfly. We're down to the wire. <laughs> well, here's the here's the problem. Yeah. <sighs> Because I have nothing to kill him with. I'm going to trade my levitate. Yeah, for a scorch. For a scorch. Yeah. Oh, we could actually do him now. Well. We could take him out now. Yeah. Uh! No, it's a scimitar. All right, what's this? What's this? <laughs> what's this? What did you find for me? Nothing. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Um, it's a strength melee seven. I have no chance at this. Oh. 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 I could bless myself, but it's not likely to happen. Oh, okay. oh, 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 I want it. My bottom lip hurts. You know why? Because you're sticking it out all day. <laughs> 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 
I can explore again. That was my sword. <laughs> you probably should, because I can't. <laughs> well, that kills one of my blessings. Well. Or my fox. How can you do the, I just, what I, does the fox I say? I can't. That's all. You so, can't. You can't explore again. And then we've got a bunch well, of Well, we could we could make a mad dash at the end if you want. I still can't, but yeah. You still can't make a mad dash? No. I can make a mad dash. Mm, okay. All right, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cards left in this stack. One of them is a... Is a... What does the fuck say? Actually, it'd be good if... Dogmart! Oh... It'd be good if we, oh. If we found the guy in there. Like, hey, wait. Like if, if we, we found, found the guy in there, we could close it. Oh, yeah. And he him, pops. So. so if if we would have found the Goblin Raider and then closed the location, and then we look through and there is a villain, the villain stays and the location is not closed. Right. So that would have worked. But hey, this will work too. Yeah. I'm going to take 1d4 minus 1 fire damage, which even if it's all of it, it's three of these cards. Which, that's not horrible. What's that? Oh, yeah, I've got to do that, too. One fire... Th 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 just this you. is me. Okay, just this you. This is me. One fire damage. Oh, uh, did it. Yeah. Um, yeah, if we don't get this... Probably. I have I have five cards left, and Lim will be X limb <laughs> We might have to start this. In All right, here goes the Gogmert roll. Five. He is defeated. Each character at your location is dealt 1d4 acid damage. We win on a technicality. <laughs> I'm dealt two damage. You are dealt some amount of damage. It really doesn't matter because Woo! we have defeated him. <laughs> that was funny. Based on the scenario, we will have to roll a d6. So the goblin, any goblin trait. Any critter, goblin. He... he we automatically got defeated. And because we rolled a five, it's an automatically defeat. Like, a, a, if he had rolled a one, it would have been something else. If he rolled a two, I know that was plus ten. So that yeah, been, that would have been... That would have been, uh, been really bad. <laughs> there's there's the table right there that we were rolling on. And fortunately, yes. I rolled. ba bam I rolled the five. I was not convinced that we were going to win that. <laughs> I thought we were doomed. <laughs> All right, so... <laughs> for um for the reward. Ooh, what do we get? What do we get? One of us can have the Sahedron medallion, and since it oh, it does not say healing. I thought it would said healing on it, but it does not. One of us can put this in the deck. It you can discard the card to reduce damage dealt by four, but if you do an Arcane or Divine nine, you can recharge it. So that's definitely a me item. Yeah, I don't have any of those stats. <laughs> So that's that's not bad. Um, and we get a skill feat. Ooh, so we get a, a feat. A, a skill feat um, Hand is over. going to... It, yeah, it's going to give an extra plus to the stats. This is for a skill feat. A card feat will give you an additional card in your deck. <laughs> and a power feat will give you one of these extra boxes on the powers can add to your hand size or it can give you an extra bump on your powers when you get to be um when you get halfway through you can choose uh whether you want to be like for lamb he can be a tent preacher or an arcane tinkerer and that's after adventure three oh. not not scenario three adventure three so like halfway through the whole path yeah so we have to get through these six all of two. and look at all the powers on these there's a lot of different powers that you yeah. can start unlocking. Wait, yeah. Yeah. You, you said skill feet, though. Those are power feet. Those are different powers. Right. I said skill feet, so it's going to be like, I'm going to probably take charisma. I'm taking strength, obviously. 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 Yeah. I already marked it because I was so excited. So, the best thing we've seen to do is to put sleeves on these, and then you can mark it directly on there instead, instead of ruining the cards. So, we've just got cheapy sleeves on here. And you got it done, but and you got it done before my bedtime. Win win. <laughs> it's a win win. <laughs> um. So then we look at our deck, and then yes. we we have to trim it down. To we our, have to trim it down. Size. All right. So I've got stuff I obviously can't use. Like I picked up this longsword. I'm giving it to you. 
I have 17 cards, now 18, so I know I'm going to have to lose at least three cards. So I don't really need this mirror image. It's not bad. It's you, not you great, You know what I have though. for you? What do you have for me? A uh, cure. No. I was going to give you a holy candle. I thought it had oh, healing, but it it's doesn't not have really healing. healing. But now, that's two I, items. I don't even know if I've got space. What do I have space for? I have... Oh, Yeah. I've got three. a codex and a thieves tools I can get rid of. I have three items, and I could probably. Get I have rid of two one items, and I have to get rid of both. If you don't want, oh, up you, to you. I have my bracers, which I like. I have my thieves tools, which I like. But I also have a mattock, which helps with obstacles and stuff. Um, well, I don't have anything except for these, but I can get rid of them because both of these are super important. Um, oh, and I have a blessing, so I'm definitely going to kill one of my blessings of the gods. Here, I, I will I will get rid of my bracers. It seems kind of lame, because combat damage, we've been getting a lot of fire damage. Okay. So well, I can, I can keep either the Codex or Thieves. The Codex was good to help acquire boons, mm. but it adds only one die. Mm. So, let's say I find a sword. I'm going to have 2d4. Ooh, it's probably not going to help. It's probably <laughs> not going to help. I will keep my thieves tools. I think thieves tools are really great. So. All right. So I've got my two items here. No. Am I keeping the candle? You're, you're keeping the, either the candle or the medallion. Either one. I'll keep the candle. All right. So I'm keeping the thieves tools and the medallion. I get five blessings. One, two, three, four, five. I've got my four spells. One, two, three. Where my other spell? Oh yeah, somebody. Okay. Oh, there's my other spell. I oh, oh, I picked up weapons. an extra blessing along the way. Forgot yeah, about did. that. I kind of like the long sword. I kind of like the quarter staff because it has bludgeoning, and I can help you if you need help. That's the thing about the quarter staff, but it's kind of lame. Yeah, it's not great. Kind of lame, so to the ditch, ditch pile. It. I mean, I've got my, I've got my burn spells, which Kinda I like. like the dog slicer. If my D six rolls a one, it counts as a three instead. But I have to discard it, which will recharge it. Yep. My long spear is good because I get to re-roll the dice, and that saved me once. Yes, it did. I kind of like having a, a, a mixture of stuff. Yes. Instead of the same thing over and over, if you find out that it's not working, well, I mean, you're stuck with it if you. Also, like, Don't the have long else. sword is plus a D8, and I can discard it and recharge it for a D6. Or the rapier is 2D4, and I can recharge for a 4. What's better? Which one? They got the long sword or the rapier? Yeah. Um, the 8D6 is going to give you an average of an 8. Yep. 3d4 is going to give you an average of a seven and a half. This so the long sword is slightly better. Now, if you're not going to recharge it, the rapier is slightly better. If you right. are going to recharge it, the long sword is a little bit better. Thanks for hanging out, Charlotte. Woo! Thanks, Charlotte. I'm glad you can join us. <laughs> she says, "Thanks for playing a game I like." Gosh, <laughs> it's like... one of my favorites, literally. Yeah. So and stuff knew you would love it. Well, I already have a long. I already have a long sword, so I could keep the rapier. Yes, and give yourself some options. And you know what? This is going to come back. You're going to have a chance to get it again. All right. So this so. is for you. This is for you. How many do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Ta-da! We didn't really pick up that much stuff that time. No, we didn't. Um, occasionally, you will be given. Like a random item of a certain type. Um, and so, you you know, if you like getting a lot of spells, you'll probably shoot for a spell in that case. If you like weapons, you'll probably shoot for a weapon. Um, or at least you'll hope for one. Um, but then your characters just get better and better and better. And there's a different villain and different henchman in just about every one. So when we play the next one, that is going to be called The Problem with Dragons... Okay. There's going to be poison traps and a dragon called Black Fang. So it's going to be different. And everyone is going to be a little bit different. Hey, we're winners. What do you think we win? What would you call it? One? Two, one, one. Two, one, one. All right.
That's what I would call it. Hey, thanks for following. Thanks for following. A wild, wild west. Nice. So, yeah, let's continue on with co-op night. Let's play something else. All right, cool. We'll be right back. Yep. Thank you.